in this video we are going to have a look at the rules which cover using ranged weapons in the Mithras rule set. So knock that arrow, prepare to launch that javelin and swing that sling before we fell a giant. My name's Inwells and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back. I hope you're all looking good and feeling fine and managing to engage with some really satisfying RPGing at the moment. Since making these rule videos, I often get requests for new ones or topics to be included. The videos I created about the Animus were heavily requested and I got a similar request recently for looking at the rules relating to ranged combat. So I thought I would make this video to help us all get our heads around those bows and arrows and crossbows, etc. Right, first things first. If you've come from another rule set when characters, um, notably rangers, can load and fire several arrows with great precision in very t small time frames that deal deadly damage and then fell a huge amount of mobs before the spellcaster can even click their fingers then you might want to take an opportunity to step back and touch make contact with reality before listening to the rest of this video if you are the sort of player that likes to be playing that legless character who's firing number of arrows within seconds then this is probably not the combat option for you within Mithras. Ranged combat within Mithras is deadly probably more deadly than any other system I know because of its hit location rules, you can definitely take out one person with one hit to the head or slow them by clipping their legs with an arrow, causing them to limp or reduce their movement rate. But the rules support a more realistic ranged combat fire, paying close attention to reloading and the firing of ranged weapons. So in this video i'm going to look at the types of weapons what their stats mean the roles associated with firing these weapons in combat and finally some combat specials with relate to specifically relate specifically to ranged weaponry so first up types of ranged weapons now there is a list available of all the ranged weapons within mithras which can be found on page 65 of the core rulebook these range from simple thrown weapons such as daggers and javelins and spears to more exotic weapons like hunting bowlers and blowguns and also includes all your bows and crossbows which we are very familiar with Within the table, there are various stats for each of these weapons. And what these weapon, this, these stats actually mean is actually found on a few pages earlier in the core rulebook on page 62. But what I'm going to do is that we're going to quickly have a look at these stats and what they actually mean. And although I will glance over the ones which are self-explanatory, but if you want more details about the stats of the weapons, then you can find it on page 107 of the core rulebook. Okay, first up, damage damage is just the the number of dice or the dice with the modifiers that you roll to inflict damage on your opponent if you have a successful hit damage modifier some weapons allow you to apply your damage modifier if you have one to the weapon um, really these are things like thrown weapons where you can put a bit of your strength behind it force is used when someone is parrying the incoming missile with a shield it refers to the size of the weapon when you're trying to overcome the um, shield and links to the table about parrying when you have attackers weapon size and defenders weapon size range this is in meters and represents three different range brackets close 
effective and long. There are additional penalties applied due to a distance and these are called distance penalties and we will talk about those later on. I'm also going to talk more about range now. So close range, um, this is the range in which the combat special choose location can be used without rolling a non-critical roll, providing that the, the target is stationary and unaware. Outside this range bracket, the choose location combat special is only available for ranged weapons on a critical. So nice and close, you can choose um, you can choose the combat special choose location effective range this means that there are no immediate modifiers either positive or negative um, for firing this weapon within these ranges but remember that the distance penalties which i'll cover later on might be applicable in this situation finally long ranges these are the ranges in which the damage is halved and the force is reduced by one step. So a large force would become a medium, a medium would become a small, plus the damage is halved. Okay, combat effects. These are the possible specials that can be used when using this weapon if you are lucky enough to get a combat special. Impaling size, this is the size of the weapon or its ammunition when the impaling special is being used for example when you throw a spear encumbrance self-explanatory ap slash hp armor points and hit points the armor points and hit points of the weapon is how much damage that weapon can take from a direct attack these are used when um, you are parrying with the weapon and you the opponent might use a damage um, parrier's weapon <coughs> just had a coughing fit so if my eyes look a little bit watery that is because of the coughing fit anyway the most observant of you might have noticed that i missed one of the stats out and um, this is because i wanted to pay a lot more detail and attention to this one this is the attribute that can slow the rate of fire down and stop characters shooting off several hours in quick succession with a blur of reload. So this stat is called load and this is the number of turns which is needed to load or reload the weapon. So remember that each combat round in Mithras lasts five seconds and there are several passes within each combat round called turns in which the players use action points to complete actions. So a character using a short bow with a load of two will spend two action points reloading their short bow before they can fire it again. So if a character has three action points during a combat round, they would spend turn one and turn two reloading, meaning that they will be able to fire on their third action. Now, there is a combat special called Rapid Reload. This allows the player to reduce the reload time by of the next shot by one. So if the same bow user gets a special on their first attack and they use they choose rapid reload as the combat special, the next reload will only be one. So it will take one action in one turn and then they can fire. However, you have to remember that rapid reload is stackable. So if the player gain two combat specials, say by rolling a critical roll against an opponent's failed roll, they could stack two rapid reloads together, meaning that their next action, they would fire the bow. Now, we are getting into the realm of Regulus here, Legolas here, but remember, if you're using up your combat specials to reload, you cannot use them for things like choose location, okay? So there, there's a pay off there. Thrown weapons just need a, a ready weapon action before throwing them although it if the character has a second weapon ready for example a second javelin then this can be readied using a free action some gms so check with them might allow you to have a second arrow ready to go so allowing a 
quick second shot with the bow before having to reload. Discuss this with the GM before becoming a ranged um, weapon specialist so you understand the rules and how they're going to play them. Now, before we get into talking about other combat as aspects of ranged weapons, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras, both rules and play sessions. I share with you a lot of the actual streaming content that I do on Twitch and I also do some personal blogs and I'm still trying to develop um, some ideas and some videos about how I GM. So why not subscribe and press that bell button so you get a notification when the next video goes live. Also if you would like to provide some extra support then you can the link to my patreon account is in the information below if you're interested in any of my adventures then i provide a behind the scene video about how i created the scenario and my thought process is on that and also if you would like to look at my adventure notes related to these then they are available on my website in wills.co.uk they, you can have them for free if you wish, but a small donation would be appreciated. Oh, and there's also some of my fiction on there. Yeah, I write some fiction as well. Okay, back to ranged weapons. So you have reloaded your bow, slung that, swung that sling around a couple of times and are ready to fire. Let's have a look at the other rules and modifiers which come into play with ranged weapons. Okay. First up, situation modifiers. On page 108 of the core rulebook, there are ranged combat situation modifiers. These include the effect on the difficulty grade for the shot in various situations. For example, in light wind, the difficulty grade becomes hard. If the target you are shooting at is prone, it becomes formidable obviously because they're lying down and if the attacker is prone it becomes herculean although i am sure that firing a bow from a prone position i might actually rule as impossible now i mentioned earlier about distance penalties and this is when i'm going to talk about them now in this sec section section so these distance penalties are independent of range and are penalties which occur due to the size of the target and the distance it is away from the attacker. So the table is on page 108 of the core rulebook, but essentially the size of the target impacts on the difficulty grade in certain situations. For example, if the distance was between 1 and 20 meters and the size and the target was the size of a mammoth say size 63 then of course it would be easier to hit the target and so the distance penalty is one step easier so when the character comes to roll instead of requiring a standard success they will need a easy success so if at the same time, if the size of the target is less than 10 and was over 121 meters away, then the combat wall would be four steps harder. Yes, that's right, because it's a very small target further away. I always consider these distant penalties very sensible and almost like common sense element of range combat although it does provide something else to think about and consider before releasing that arrow okay next up my favorite my favorite rule ever firing into a crowd okay this is not always advisable unless you are a great archer and the chances of hitting someone else is is usually quite high especially if combat is happening so in order to reflect this if you are shooting your missile weapon to the edges of the combat then the skill automatically is hard so you would then um, add your distance penalties to that as well so it almost like makes it one step harder if you are shooting through the combat or into the midst of the combat, then the difficulty grade is formidable. 
okay which is understandable it's only going to be those very good archers or with the use of a luck point that they're actually going to pull that off if the shot misses then the gm should make a random decision where it goes if it does happen to hit a friendly target or another target then they are still they still have the option to either evade or parry the attack if you ever watch our actual play videos hasra has this unnerving habit of chucking his spear into existing combat so far it's always hit its target but Every time he chucks it, he's just pushing his luck one more, a little further in that hit somebody else direction. Okay, what about aiming? If the player would like to take some time to aim their shot, then this is possible. Aiming requires the whole combat round to be used. And by aiming, the player can reduce the situation modifier by one grade. Notice the situation modifier, none of the others, just that one. So if the target is prone, the character can spend a round aiming, so reducing that modifier from a formidable to a hard. Just a couple more modifiers, then you can head off and start shooting at that dummy. Okay, firing on the move. If you wish to fire while on horseback or within a chariot or wagon, then your combat skill for the weapon is capped by the skill level of the person char in charge of the driving or riding. So even if you have a, a throw weapon skill of 86, if the person driving the wagon only has a drive skill of 23, then your combat skill is capped by that. It relates to them sort of like holding everything steady. If you wish to move and fire on foot, then you can only walk and fire. You're not allowed to run. Unless, of course, you have the combat trait of skirmisher. More about this in a different video. And finally, impaling attacks. Remember that we mentioned about this in the stats section of the video. Anyone with an arrow impaled into them can take the usual action to try and pull it free or yank it free, which would then inflict half damage when it comes out. Remember that until this time, there will be the usual modifier on all the character skills rolls. And that brings us to the end of this ranged weapon rules video. I did mention that rapid reload combat special, which can be used to reduce the number of their time for the reload. Well, there are other specials beneficial relating to range combat, for example, circumvent cover, drop foe. But I will be covering these in a more in-depth look at combat specials in a future video. I hope this video has provided you with some important information that you will need to become that much loved ranger. I will be back with further rule videos soon. And if there are any topics like this one that you would like me to cover, then do let me know in the comments below. But until next time, I'm going to leave you reloading your bow and head off to finish editing this month's podcast of Mithras Matters. Well, well worth checking out by the way links are in the comments below so until next time i hope all your opposed worlds are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special which you might want to choose rapid reload if you're firing a bow happy mithrasing everyone see ya bye